So here's the basics. This is the, the throttle right here. This is the safety that has to be depressed to be able to operate it. And this is the basically the clutch. Um, and then right here, this lever, you can see when it's straight up and down, it's in neutral. When it's to the right, that's reverse. And then it has one, two, three gears. Um, one thing to know is the gears aren't necessarily for the speed. I mean, it does affect the speed, but the first gear is more for if you're going up a hill or if you have a really heavy load um, and you're having to go up a steep slope or something or through some mud, then you want to have it in a lower gear because um, otherwise if you have it in third gear, it's going to want to bog down and, and shut off. But for the most part, a lot of times you can operate it in third gear and control your speed by using the clutch. So if you just slightly depress it, it's not going to go as fast than as if you press it down all the way. So if that makes sense. Uh, the other thing is, this right here is to dump the bucket. So when you pull that lever, it releases the latch and allows the bucket to dump forward and then you have to manually pull it back. Um, the last thing before I just kind of show you the operation is for when starting it, um, the lever, you can see if you push it all the way forward, that's the choke symbol. So if it's a cold start, if it hasn't been started that day, you want to push it all the way as far forward as it'll go and pull the pull the pull start. Um, and then after it runs for maybe 10 seconds or so, you can go ahead and throttle it back down right, right below that, you know, to where it's about at its highest speed and it's ready to operate. Uh, the other thing when starting it, is it's not necessary to pull the pull start as hard as you can. Um, these things, you know, we keep them maintained and they, they do a good job at starting uh, within the first couple pulls and, uh, and it doesn't take a hard pull. Just a gentle pull, it might take a couple of them, but if we pull as hard as you can every time, uh, eventually those cords are gonna break and it just creates a maintenance hassle for us. Um, and then another thing is it has big red letters right here it says do not change gear when moving so that means when you're operating the machine and you have this lever depressed and you're it's moving forward you cannot reach down and switch gears while it's moving you have to completely release this and then you can switch gears into either reverse or forward and then you can uh, operate it again. It's going to mess up the, the gears in there if you try switching it while you're moving. So um, now I'll go ahead and just do a quick little demonstration on how to operate it and we'll move to that point. So I'm just going to talk through how I'm operating it here. And once it's started, I can back off the throttle a little bit and then put it in gear and press in the clutch to start moving. The way you turn these things is they actually act kind of like a wheelbarrow. You can just pick up on it and turn. When it's empty, you can do like I'm doing here and and push down on it to pick up the front wheels to turn it. That's one pretty easy way to do it. But when you have a full load, you actually have to pick up on it uh, because the load will keep it, make it too heavy to push down and pick up the front wheels. And it balances itself out pretty good so that it's not too heavy to pick up on even with a, a full load in it.
Something else you can do is you can actually dump a partial load by lifting up on the machine without pressing the lever to dump it. And then you can move it to a different area and press the lever to dump the remainder of the load. That way you don't have to dump the whole thing in one place. So the last thing is, it is usually important to make sure we check the fuel level. Uh, you know, throughout the day, especially before you begin using it, you have to lift the bucket and the, the tank is right there. Um, because if you are aware of how much fuel is in it, and you fill up the bucket and it runs out of fuel, then it's really hard to get to that and get fuel in it without emptying this. If you can't move it, if it's not turned on and it's full. So, I mean, it's possible you can get a funnel in there to be able to get fuel in it, but it's not easy. So it's best if we just always pay attention to how much fuel is in it. Um, and then we also like to maintain them whenever we're putting materials in it. Um, if we are using a, like the mini skid steer to, to load them, it's important not to let the materials fall outside of the bucket into like on top of here. And if any materials do fall on top of here, before you start using it, you wanna sweep them off. Because if you don't, they'll, they might fall down in, in this area and kind of get on top of the motor and stuff and uh, just cause it to get dirty and, and potentially damage it so and then you know every day we like to take a blower and blow it off get some of the loose dirt off and you know every once in a while once a week or so we'll, we'll wash it down and get it nice and clean